Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 30. And this week, I want to show you how you can create your very own snow brush completely from scratch and go from this to this. Okay, so the picture that we're gonna put our snow onto is the one that you can see on screen now. This isn't one that I've taken, this is one that a good friend of mine called Roberto Palmari sent in to me, and I believe it's in a place, I'll try and say this correctly, called Cinque Confini at Mount Terminillo. I hope I said that right, Roberto, but it's Roberto sent this over to me. Uh, I was just saying that I've got a picture I'm working on in a couple of weeks' time where I'm going to have to create some kind of snow, uh, and I needed a picture to kind of practice it on. It just so happens that Roberto was at this location, and he kind of very kindly sent me over so I could use it on this uh, little tutorial here. So this is what we're going to apply it onto, and we're going to actually you create the snow by uh, making a brush. So first of all, then I need to go to the File menu and choose New, and just create a new blank document. And I'm going to have that 1,000 pixels on both the height and the width, and we'll keep the resolution to 240, and just click OK. So we end up with a nice square blank document. Okay, so the next thing I need to do then is first we'll go to the Filter menu, go to noise and add noise so we just fill this document here with noise now we can go with the amount here when the little uh, dialog box here we can take the amount all the way up to 400 but that actually makes the no although there's more in there it's a lot smaller and we don't want it to be too small because actually at one stage in a moment we need to make the noise even bigger so we're going to go to something like let's just keep it around about the 200 ish something like that okay now the uh, distribution, we'll keep to Gaussian, and we'll also make sure there's a little tick there in the monochromatic. So we'll click OK. Now I need the black and the white areas of this noise to be a lot bigger. So to do that, I'm gonna get my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm gonna drag out a bit of a selection in the middle here. So it's very, very difficult to see the uh, marching ants now that we've got this noise laid down in this document, but I've got kind of a square shape in the middle and then I'm gonna to go to layer, new, and layer via copy. You could also do the keyboard shortcut here of command or control J. So that's gonna make that selection and put it up on its own layer like we can see there. So now what I can do is actually get rid of this background layer here, but it's locked at the moment. So I'm just gonna double click on the word background, click okay, and then delete, so it deletes it. So now that we've got this little selection here of noise, I'm gonna to go to the edit menu, free transform to get the transform handles, Hold down my Shift and Alt key or Shift and Option key depending on what you're working on. I'm going to click on the upper left handle and drag it out now to fill that document space there. So we'll fill it in the middle. So now we've got bigger kind of areas of black and bigger areas of white. The next thing we're going to do is go to the filter menu again, but this time we're going to go to the filter gallery. And this is where we get this big dialog box comes up. We've got loads of different options on the right hand side here within these little folders where we can choose all kinds of presets that we can also affect and alter by sliders that come with each one of them. We've got all kinds of things, artistic folders, distorts, all kinds of stuff. But the one we want to use is in the folder called Stylize. And there's actually only one within that one, and it's called Glowing Edges. And you can see already on the preview the kind of effect that's given us. Now, snowflakes being snowflakes, they're not identical. What we don't want to do is have everything looking the same as it's falling from the sky, because that just wouldn't be right. We just need random shapes. And now that we're on this Glowing Edges kind of preset here, we're on this uh, with the noise that you can see on the left-hand side, we can really start to to affect it. All we want are random shapes. So to get the really make them change the shapes and give us a random kind of look, we can go to the edge width and we can bring that over to the right hand side and you can see that's going to give us less. If we go to the left, it's going to give us more. But we don't have too many because we can increase that later on when we use some brush setting. So something like that will be fine. Let's go for around about there. We can also use the edge brightness slider to affect it. So if we go to the left, you see we get a lot more like that, but then we're kind of losing the shapes that we want. So let's bring it over just a little bit like so. If I bring it too far over, we'll lose the amount of black spots and uh, shapes that we have. So it's just a case of balancing out where you want the edge width and the edge brightness sliders to be. But I think I'm pretty happy with, I think I'm pretty happy with that there. Smoothness slider, generally leave it as it is as, at one. Once we've done that, we'll click OK. 
Now the last thing I need to do at this particular stage is turn my foreground color to white. So at the moment they're at the default of black and white, I'm going to press X so that my uh, foreground color now becomes white. Go to the gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard. You also find it in the toolbar on the left hand side. And I'm going to use the gradient option, which is the second one along, which is foreground to transparent. So I click OK there. And all I'm going to do now when I'm using a linear gradient, which is the first option from the left hand side, I'm just going to click outside our document and drag in just a little bit just to get rid of those shapes from the edges. Because if we don't do that, when we're laying down the brush stroke, it'll look really obvious. It'll be very kind of like defined outline around our snow. And we don't want that. So something like that. I might actually make a few more of these little black spots stand out a bit more. And I can do that by going to Image, Adjustments and Levels. And we'll just get the mid-tone slider and drag it over to the right like so. So that just brings a few more of those back. And we'll click OK. We now need to define this as a brush. So we go to the edit menu, choose define brush preset. And the great thing here is that Photoshop will look at this document and whatever it's got on it that's black, it will turn that into the brush. It'll ignore all the white areas and only the black areas will make up our brush. So we go define brush preset, we call it a name, something really creative like snow and click OK. And we're actually done now. That's all we need to do with this brush. So what we're going to do, sorry, to, to make the brush. So we can close this document. So we go to File and Close. And we don't need to save it. We're now going to go back to our Cinque Confini uh, scene. And this is where we can start now using our brush to lay down some snow. So I'm going to add a blank layer. And I'm actually going to change my foreground color to black just so that I can see in the first few strokes that I use here so I can actually see the snowflakes. Because the first part of this, the snowflakes are going to be really, really small. And this, uh, this kind of landscape scene here has got quite a lot of mist in it and I might not see them as I'm laying them down. So I'm just going to paint them in black and we can always change that to white straight away afterwards. Okay, so now we can go and find our brush then. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard and in the top left, choose the options to drop down so we can see our brushes. And what you'll notice is the very last one now that's available to us in this section is the one that's called Snow. And that's the one that we've just made. So I'm going to click on that. And all I need to do now is just change a few settings so that it behaves exactly how I want it to do. So it looks kind of realistic. So I'm going to click on the brush presets. In the brush presets here, I'm going to click on brush tip shape. And this is where I'm going to increase the spacing first of all, because what I don't want to do is to have all these snowflakes kind of overlapping on each other. So I'll increase the spacing to around about 50, something like that. Then I'm going to go to uh, shape dynamics. Shape dynamics, I'm going to go to the angle jitter, because what I don't want is every single time that I put her down a brush stroke is for every brush stroke to look the same. There has to be something different about it. And a great one, particularly with something like falling snowflakes, is to change the angle jitter. So every stroke, it'll be at a slightly different angle. So I'll take the angle jitter all the way up to 100. And in the control section here, because I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro uh, tablet, I'm going to use pen pressure. So the angle will be affected by how hard or how light I press down on the tablet itself. And the last one we'll go to is scattering, just so that we don't have all the snowflakes in one continuous straight line. We'll get them to disperse just a little bit. And we can do that by just changing the scattering amount. And I'll just take it to around about 50%, something like that. Okay, so now we're ready to start painting in our snow. So let's close down this preset. We're going to get our brush size way down now. Let's take our brush size way down to around about the 200 mark, something like that. Let's just use my right and left bracket keys. Again, we're painting in this black foreground color. And all I'm going to do now then is just apply some brush strokes going from the top all the way down to the bottom where the snow joins, just at the bottom there. So just cover it all over the few of these brush strokes containing all those black specks. So I can zoom in now, you can see all these black specks. These are actually going to be the snowflakes way in the distance. The trick with this is to add depth to the snow. Just like I did in a previous video where I showed how we can create dust and debris, we need to create depth. So we do that by having small flakes way in the distance and blurred out. Right there in the background, we need to have some in the middle ground and then some in the foreground. And as we come closer to the viewer, the flakes get slightly bigger. So these are way in the distance. Now they're black at the moment, we need to invert them. So we're going to go to Image, Adjustments and Invert so they become white. They're really, really small, so we need to add a little bit of blur because they're not going to be something that's going to be really in focus and sharp. So we go to Filter, Blur, 
Gaussian blur and a real small amount here like 0.5 pixel radius will be all that we need to do because they're way way in the distance and really really small so we'll click OK. So to build up the depth here all we need to do then is add another blank layer but for each layer that we add our snow we just get our brush and we increase the size of the brush so I'm going to go from 200 which we can see in the top left here I'm going to use my right bracket key to take this to maybe 500 so now brush, um, brush size is 500, again I'll go from the top and a few strokes from the top all the way down to the bottom or at least where this snow is right on the floor here like so. We're going to invert it by pressing Command or Control I so it becomes white. Now we're going to add some blur to it but rather than using Gaussian blur I'm going to use motion blur just to add a bit of variety in here because as snowflakes come down they won't be going straight straight in a straight line they're going to be going off in all kinds of angles and we can kind of fake that by using motion blur and this little disc here so I'm going to set the disc here so it's going off at that kind of angle basically meaning that the snow will be coming from the top down to the bottom kind of like on a, going down to the right and the distance I'm going to keep it nice and small around about three something like that in fact let's take it to we'll go for four and we'll click OK we're going to add another layer and um, let's just zoom out just a little bit going to get my brush rather than being at 500 we're going to go to 800 and we're going to paint a few more strokes so as we're getting closer to the viewer the snowflakes are getting bigger I'm going to invert those so they become white go filter blur motion blur but rather than having the actual angle here where it goes off to the right hand side I'm going to drag it over to the left hand side there's, so there's real kind of variation in how the snowflakes look what their size is, what their blur is, and also the direction that they're coming down. So all adds to the realism. Distance, because this is getting closer, I'm going to take this up to 8 and then click OK. So you get the kind of idea here. All we're doing is just adding in layers here with snowflakes at different sizes just to give that impression of depth. So at the moment, 800, I'll take this one up to 1100 pixels. And I'm going to paint in white foreground colour now, change that over because obviously I can see them now that they're bigger. So I'm going to paint across the top and down the bottom just a bit like so. Go to filter, blur, motion blur and I'll change the angle this time. I'll go to the right hand side and we'll change that to 12. And then I'll just add one more layer. This is going to be the snow that's really, really close. The snow that's right in the foreground. So a blank layer, I'm actually going to keep the brush the same size, so I'm just going to paint in the middle just a little bit there just to lay down a few strokes. And they're not going to be big enough, in fact what I need to do is actually make them bigger than what our brush will actually go to. So now that I've laid down some strokes in the middle there, I'm going to go to Edit and Free Transform to get the, the uh, transform handles around that particular brush stroke. Let's just zoom out a little bit, get my uh, Shift and Alt or Shift and Option key, click on the left hand top handle there and drag them out nice and big. Really, really big like so. Let's just zoom in a bit now. And because they're really close, we need to make them out of focus. So we'll go to Filter, Blur, and I can just use Gaussian Blur here to really blur them out. And we'll take it up to around about, about nine-ish, something like so, and click OK. So I guess the last thing I'll do is just tidy this all up. We've got all the layers here containing the snow. Uppermost one is selected. I'll hold down my shift key, click on the very first one so they're all selected. Go to the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel and choose new group from layers and call it snow and then click OK. Now I think that probably the last thing I would do at this stage is now that we've got all these layers here into a, into a group, the bottom bit here, you can actually see some of the snowflakes that are painted in appearing over the top of the snow. Now in reality, you wouldn't see that because as they came down from the skies and they hit the snow already on the floor, they kind of disappear. So all I would do at that stage was just get a, a layer mask, get a black brush and paint them away off that bottom bit. But before I do that, or actually I'm not going to do it, but one thing I want to just say is about the brush that we've already made. We know that it's in the uh, brushes here. We can see it at the very, very end. And we've already come in and we've made some changes changes to it within the brush presets so that we know how it's going to behave. Once you've done that, what I would always suggest you do is because you want to save this brush for future use. At the bottom of the brush presets panel here, we've got this little icon in the middle. When I click on that, it brings up the preset manager. All you'd want to do is click on the last brush, which is the brush that you've made, and then click save set. And when you do that, you can then call it a name and save it within the brushes so they're always going to be available to you within uh, Photoshop. However, once you click save, when you go click done, they won't appear 
within the brushes here and they won't appear within the options of the brushes that you've got here. You'd need to restart Photoshop for them to appear as an option that's always going to be there for you. So I kind of hope that makes sense. Um, so there you go. That's how you can make snow. Lots and lots of ways that you can do it. Obviously, you could already go to a website like DeviantArt that have snow brushes that you can actually download and use. And also, one thing that people don't know about, within the windows here, and we go to Styles, Photoshop itself, Adobe have actually thrown in snow for us. And it's in the Styles here. Let me just hover my cursor over. It's this one just here. But it ain't all that good. But that's between me and you, all right? So there's another option there for you. Create your own brush download some brushes, or if you want to just try it, you can also go to the window styles and then choose snow from the preset that's already been loaded into Photoshop for you. Okay, so there you go, nice and quick, nice and simple, and I think a very realistic way there of adding in snow into your pictures. The only thing you need to do to remember to kind of help that realism is make sure that you add snow for the background, some for the middle ground, some for the foreground. Do that, you can't go wrong. And it's very similar to the tutorial that I did showing how to create dust and debris, which was just a couple of episodes back. Now, as always, make sure you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any videos that I post out each and every week, including this weekly show. Sometimes I also throw out extra videos, so click on the subscribe button, you won't miss a thing. And also, I'd really appreciate the support. If you could just let other people know about this video, my YouTube channel, and also the podcast, let them know about it, spread the word, and I'd really, really appreciate it. But hey, for now, for this week, that's all I've got for you. I'll see you next time.